Welcome to another video. This is a series on formative assessments. If you missed the first overview of formative assessments, the link to that video will be down in the description box below. Feel free to check that out if you want a, an overview of what formative assessments are and how they can help students with disabilities. Feel free to check that out. But let's get into Google Forms. We are going to do a deep dive on Google Forms today which is a very useful resource and tool for formatively assessing students online. So let's just jump into it. We have formative versus summative assessments. This I went over in the overview of formative assessments. Who may benefit from formative assessments? You are going to benefit from formative assessments because you are going to be able to identify what your students know and don't know and that'll be good going forward in your lesson plans. And students also benefit from formative assessments in that they help with memory, they help with developing their self-esteem, especially with school-related material, and also they're not summative assessments, and they're usually, usually not very high stakes. So students with test anxiety and just general anxiety are going to have a better time with formative assessments. So formative assessment resources. Obviously, there are literally thousands of formative assessment resources out there, but today we are going to cover Google Forms. We're gonna start out with an overview of Google Forms, then using Google Forms for surveys. Then I'm gonna cover how to use or how I use Google Forms for quizzes, and then other fun Google Form features just, just because. So let's jump into the second part of this video where we are working with Google Forms. Okay, so here I have opened drive.google.com. It's just my Google Drive that I have. Actually, this is my DOE account. So I'm going to go to new, scroll down to Google Forms, and then this blank Google Form will open. First thing I wanna do is add a title. And then that title, actually, if I click on this, it'll automatically fill in with what I write here so that when I go here, it'll be titled title as the file name. So the format of Google Forms, we can add questions here and you have several types of questions. You have a short answer, paragraph, multiple choice, check boxes, drop down file upload, where students can upload a file, a linear scale, multiple choice grid, a checkbox grid, date, and time. So what is your name? That can be a short answer question. Students can write in their name, that's a short answer. And I'm gonna make this required because I need students to answer that question. Then I'm gonna add question with this little plus mark bar. We can also import questions if we have questions that we wanna import. You can add a title and description. So if we wanted to title a section, I also, you can add an image or a video. These are very helpful as well. Adding video is something you can do to chunk your lessons. I did a whole video on chunking with Google Forms. So if you're interested in that, the link will be in the description box below, along with some other videos for strategies for students with disabilities. You can also add a section. So if we want, let's say this first section, this first section just to be, what is your name? We can title this likes and dislikes or something. Then we have two sections. I use these sections a lot, especially if I'm doing a Google form test that has a bunch of questions. It chunks the questions or the test into more manageable pieces for students. And this is especially good for students with disabilities who have something like chunking or even chunked directions on their IEPs. So go check to see if your students would benefit from that by reading their IEPs. I'm sure you know all of this. So if we want to preview our Google form, we can come over here to this big I, little I, and this is what it looks like. We have the title, and this is the form description. What is your name? This is required before they can hit next. If they don't put anything here, they cannot go on to the next section. So this is likes and dislikes. This is the whole title for the entire form. They can write a little paragraph. And the difference between a paragraph and a short answer, you can see the whole line for the short answer. 
you can see the entire paragraph for a paragraph. So in a short answer, it's going to just keep going on the line. Paragraph, you can type multiple lines, kind of like that. And then it's going to ask, that's a multiple choice, check boxes, drop down menu, and then add file. They can go into their Google Drive. This is the description for the section title. This is the scale. They're obviously going on a one to 10 scale. I'm feeling fantastic. And then for this, they have to answer for each row. And then this question requires at least one response per row. So if you need one response per row, you can do that. You can obviously, you can click as many as you want though. Personal information, remember that title set that title like and description I added and then that is a date they choose from a calendar you can change the year like that and then what time did I wake up this morning and then you submit and then it will bring you to this page your response has been recording recorded submit another response and then on your side you can view the responses by a summary so this is aggregate data you can browse by question you want to browse by question and it gives you some data or you can browse by individual okay so that is how I would do more of a survey but I'm gonna go into settings and I'm always gonna collect email addresses meaning regardless of whether or not they give me their, their email address or their correct name um, I'm collecting their email addresses I'm always going to send them response receipts that just means that they are going to receive an email after filling out the form that they filled out the form and they'll receive a copy of their answers. I can restrict this to anyone with a .schools.nyc.gov email address, but obviously I'm not going to do that. I can also limit to one response. If you are using Google Classroom and importing grades from Google Classroom, this is a must and it will alert you to that fact in Google Classroom. So don't worry if you forget that. Respondents can edit after submit. I usually do that. And if they want to, if you want the students to be able to see the survey results, you can definitely check this and I can save that. So this is a really good way of doing surveys through Google Forms. So if I wanted to go and make this a quiz, I could go to, there's a section called presentation and this section called quizzes. And I can make this a quiz. I can also turn on locked mode on Chromebooks, which just basically means that students won't be able to Google the answers. So you can also release the grade immediately after submission, or you can wait for students to receive their grade after you man manually grade each person's Google form. Uh, I always do this because most of my Google Forms are multiple choice and right answer, wrong answer, just because when I'm doing formative assessments, I want the students to receive immediate feedback, which if your students have immediate feedback or feedback or one-on-one -on -one conferences with teachers on their IEPs, check. This might help them because they are receiving that feedback from, from the teacher Immediately after they submit the Google form, they don't have to wait on you to grade. Save. Now, when I go into my questions, I can make every question have a correct answer with this answer key. If I wanted to grade this multiple choice question, I can go to the answer key. Then the correct answer is spring and I'm going to make this one point and then I hit done. And it shows me this green check mark. That's the correct answer. If I scroll up here, the total point so far is one point. For short answers, you can have this be immediately graded. Let's say the only correct name is, I don't know, Kevin. They have to correct, they have to type Kevin exactly how it is right here, and you can mark all other answers incorrect. For the paragraphs, you can add an answer feedback just for everyone make that worth one point. And now my total points is up to three points. I think you get the hang of it. And this is more of a formal, formal formative assessment. It might even be classified as a summative assessment, depending on how you use it. Something helpful too is going to settings and then presentation. I always show the prog progress bar. 
and I usually add a confirmation. So my personalized confirmation is great work. Go do assignment number two. We can save that. This is my confirmation message that I typed in earlier. Great work. Go do assignment number two. I can view score. I can see my previous responses. I can edit my response or I can submit another response. So I'm going to view score and then it says two out of three. So it is going to mark all ungraded questions as incorrect. So you might want to note that to your students. Ungraded is going to be marked as incorrect until the teacher, the educator, the grader is going in and grading them. If you want to delete all of the responses, you definitely can. You could come up here and delete all responses or you can print all responses. You can download the responses as a .csv file or you can get email notifications for each new response. So if you have an assignment that was due uh, last week and you want to give students an opportunity to turn it in again, turn it in late, you can click that button. That's what I use that button for. And the two or three students who turn the assignment in late, I will get notified so I can look at their answers. Hopefully this was a helpful video. Um, hopefully you understand how to use Google Forms better for formatively assessing your students. This can be used for formative assessments at the end of a lesson or even during a lesson. If you have like hour long lessons and you want to hit a nice halfway mark checkpoint so you can adjust your lesson going forward. That's also something that I've done in the past, but they can also use be used as homework assignments or even summative assessments at the end of a unit. But check your students' IEPs to make sure that this is something that would benefit them. All right, if you are interested in more videos from me for teaching students with disabilities, there will be some links down in the description box below, but I will see you in another video.